Hi there! In this video, we'll be learning how to determine the orientation of an ellipse based on its equation. So first, recall that given a horizontal and vertical ellipse, their equations are given by this and this respectively. We know that in here, the point HK refers to the center of the ellipse, A refers to the length of the semi-major axis, while B refers to the length of the semi-minor axis. So this is just a recall of what we have learned so far. So now, given this, how do we determine the orientation with just the ellipse? Well, we can focus on the length of the semi-major axis, which is A, this one out here. We know that this length is always greater than the length of B, the semi-minor axis. So that is trivial in ellipse. So we know that A is greater than B, A is greater than B out here. But what variable does A correspond in the horizontal ellipse? In the equation, it corresponds to X out here. For vertical, A corresponds to Y. So again, X corresponds to A for horizontal and Y corresponds to A in vertical. And we know that A is larger than B. A is larger than B. So given this, we can have a strategy in determining the orientation of an ellipse given, if, given its equation. That is, we'll have an horizontal ellipse or horizontally oriented ellipse if the denominator of x is larger compared to y. So that is, this denominator a is larger than the denominator out here. And we have a vertical ellipse so, or a vertically oriented ellipse if the denominator of y this time is larger compared to the denominator of x in the equation of the ellipse. So that is what we need to remember in determining the orientation of an ellipse. So just immediately inspect the denominators out here. So take note of this one. You may take a screenshot if you want as in the next slide we'll go on and try out some examples. Okay, good. So let's try out some examples. Take note here that you may pause the video if you want, as when we go on, each example will be running through one by one very quickly since the way that we determine the orientation given an ellipse is just quick and fast. So if you want, you may pause the video along the way so that you may go on your own pace in answering these examples. So without further ado, let's start with the first example. We have x squared over 4 plus y squared over 9 equals 1. Again, the key in determining the orientation is just inspect the denominators. So in this case, we inspect 4 and 9. Upon inspecting, we'll have 4 to be less than 9. Clearly, 4 is less than 9. Or in other words, this means that 9 is greater than 4. But the, var the number 9, in this case, this denominator 9 corresponds to y, the variable y. So we know that the denominator, denominator 
of y is larger. And when we know, or when we have the denominator of y to be larger, again, from earlier, this means that the equation of this ellipse is an ellipse that is oriented vertically. And so that is the answer for this first example. And indeed, if you try to use a software, the graph of this equation is given by this. Clearly, an ellipse that is oriented vertically. So I hope you got that one correctly. Let's now move on to the second example. Again, and this time, even though we have a value for the centers, which the center, which is h and k, h at here and k, we don't really need that or these since our focus in determining the orientation is again the denominators. So we instead focus on this one. And clearly we have 25 to be greater than 16. So we know that one. And then this means that the denominator of, so 25 corresponds to x. The denominator of x is larger than the denominator of y. The denominator of x is larger. This means that from earlier, this implies that the equation of an ellipse will be oriented horizontally. Indeed, again, if we apply a software, we'll have this graph out here. An ellipse that is oriented horizontally. So that is the answer for our second example. I hope you got that one correctly. And let's now go on to our last example. This one is quite tricky. Observe here that if we compare the denominators, we'll have these two to be equal, since 36 is equal to 36. And we didn't really have any case for that one, since all we know is that we'll have mm, not really a, but rather denominator, denominator of x and denominator of y. All we had considered is that either denominator of x is greater or denominator of y is greater. How about if it is equal? Well, take note that actually in ellipse, these two denominators cannot be equal. And why is that? Well, if we observe in this example, we can actually express this one as x minus 1 squared plus y plus 1 squared equals 36. How did we arrive here? We just multiplied 36 both sides. And what can we observe in this one out here? Observe that this here is an equation of another conic section, which is the circle. So clearly this is not an ellipse. This is a circle. And indeed, if we check out its graph, we'll have this. Clearly a circle. So again, take note that in an ellipse, the denominators must be different. They can't be equal since if we have them to be equal, we'll obtain a circle. So to remark that one as a remark, if A is equal to B in the equation of an ellipse, we obtain a circle. So take note of that one. So as you can see, with this remark, we can see that there are really certain, um, there are really some connections between each conic section. In this case, we had seen a connection between the ellipse and the circle. By just some tweaking of the equation, values in the equation, we'll be able to convert one to another. So that's a good insight that we can obtain from this one. So good, I hope you got that one correctly. And to further your knowledge and your skills in obtaining the orientation of an ellipse given the equation, 
here are some exercises that you can work on. So in here, the first one is quite similar to what we had earlier. But for the second and third, these two are quite trickier since in the second we have a coefficient for x squared out here. And then for the third one, we don't really have any denominators. So it's for you to find out how to determine the orientation of these ellipses. But I promise you that you can do that. And all you need to do is use what you have learned in this video and try to manipulate certain values in these two examples. But if you struggle in this one, you may comment down below and I'll give some hints or guides on how to answer these exercises. So yeah, that's it. I hope you enjoyed and learned a lot from this one. Feel free to comment down below if you have any suggestions or reactions or recommendations for this video, this channel, this playlist, and whatever you want to comment. So yeah, that's it and that's all for this video.